Welcome to Craft Camp. I'm Emily and looks like I've got some mail. Today we're going to be learning how to make these adorable felt envelopes. I've got a no sew version as well as this really cute little stitch version. All right, let's get started. For tools and materials, I'll be using three different colors of felt. I've got ruby, turquoise, and white. If you're doing the no-so version, I'll be using the fusible bonding web and this white heat transfer vinyl. If you're doing the stitch version, I'll be using this red embroidery thread in the color 321, embroidery needles, a threader, and a thimble. I also have some needle nose tweezers to weed out my heat transfer vinyl and a little bit of glue in case I need to tack anything down. And I have this whole array of scissors in case you decide you want to cut this by hand. It should be really easy. I'm going to go ahead and do it on a Cricut, but if you're cutting by hand, I would recommend using a combination of large scissors and detail scissors. And then I have the pinking shears to give our little stamp that fun, authentic edge. And for both versions, I'll be using this Cricut Easy Press. All right, so we're gonna start with our no sew version and I've already got this all cut out. I went ahead and did it on a Cricut so it's gonna look really nice and clean, but this should be pretty easy if you wanna cut it out by hand. So I cut my vinyl on the cutting machine and now I'm weeding out the excess so it looks more like this and I'll have just the design that I want. And for something like this, there's going to be a lot of excess and if I wanted to save the scraps, I could potentially cut out the center, but I did just cut around each of my designs pretty closely. You do want to leave some excess so there's room for this little sticker to stick onto your material. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about those rough edges because everything is already cut. You can see how the cutting machine didn't cut that bottom layer, it only cut through the vinyl layer. Weed my little stamp. It's so cute. All right. Now that I've got everything weeded and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and stick them on my material. So I'll decide which side I want to be the outside and which side I want to be the inside. We'll just stay here. It's pretty easy to work with these little stickers since they just attach right on there. You can move them if you need to. And I'm just trying to give a nice equal amount around the edges. I'm usually, oop, you stuck to me. <laughs> I'm usually decent at eyeballing, but sometimes I'm not. Um, so you could always use a ruler if you wanted to make sure that you have the exact amount from the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and wait to put the stamp on until the end. So we'll start with our big around the edge piece. Okay. Now this is ready to get ironed and I have, oh, I have it right here on my lap. I have this piece of fabric I'm going to put between the plastic and my iron so that the iron doesn't melt that plastic at all. I have my iron set to the highest temperature on the Cricut Easy Press, which is 360 degrees. And you want it pretty high so that it really gets that iron on melted and attached to your material. You can always test it and we'll do a little test so you can see what it looks like if it's not finished. I always end up kind of having to do it a couple of times to make sure it's nicely in place. All right, my iron is now heated up to 360 degrees and we will just place this on here and I'm gonna set the timer, uh, which is 30 seconds, but I'll probably let it go for about a minute. So I just finished ironing this section and I wanted to show you what it looks like if it's not quite done. So this side looks pretty done and I can peel the plastic away. I usually do this really carefully in case it's not done. You can see it's sticking nicely. So I can peel this off and if I see any loose pieces, I know that I need to do another round. Be so careful not to pull this out of place. And you can see on this side, it's not quite done. See, it's not attaching to the felt fully. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another round and get this end too. I decided to pull out this little ironing mat that we have, put our fabric down, then we'll go for another minute. All right, so we have a funny little oopsie here. You can see that this side ended up really crooked and this is what happens if you don't keep a close enough eye on it when you're placing your iron down. Since I didn't leave so much sticker on this side, I didn't have as much to attach and it just got shifted when I put the iron down. So keep an eye on where your placements are so you don't end up messing up like I did. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this, but in your own, make sure you get that nice and lined up. Okay, now we're gonna add the stamp. So I'm gonna do a whole nother round of iron on, on all of these just to seal them in place. That is perfect. And I'm gonna make sure that it stays in the right place this time. And let that go for 60 seconds. How cute is that? 
All right, now it's the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and assemble our envelope. And this is where I'm gonna use the fusible web. So this should be the exact size of one of these little flaps. So I'll place it right on the flap and then bend it over. I'm gonna do one side at a time so that I don't accidentally get the other side crooked. And I'm holding it in place. If you wanted, you could put a clip on while you get your iron settled and then take the clip off right at the end to avoid burning your fingers. All right, and I will let that sit for another minute. <laughs> All right, let's do the other side. I actually only needed to do 30 seconds and it looked done. So I pulled it off and it looks pretty attached. So we'll just do the other side, 30 seconds. And there we go. We basically have our felt envelope ready to go, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra fun with one of these little stamp shapes. So I have a little heart and a little star. You can use the fusible web if you'd like. And so you can see I could just place it right on there. Or you could also use just a little bit of glue since it's small, I'm not too worried about it. And we have option of either a heart or a star. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the last of this fusible web because I want to hit this with the iron anyways to get that edge nice and pressed. Maybe a little dot of glue to hold it in place would be a good idea. All right, and now that is all stuck on there and we are ready to send some very cute little mail. Now we're gonna go ahead and move to the stitched version. So this is the exact same template, but it's gonna give us a little bit more detail and it's a little bit more complicated to do. You can also do this entire process without adding any detail and just use the envelope on its own. I think it would be really cute, but let's do this first. So I already started this, you can see this is how it would lay, but I already started stitching because the blanket stitch just takes a little bit of time. And this is how it's gonna go. And together we're gonna do this last stitch right around the edge. All right, so to get to this point, all I did was fold the envelope into the shape and I actually used clips as I went and I just clipped it here and here and then blanket stitched it while it was folded. So you get this really nice shape. I did that on both sides and then all the way around the edges. And these are gonna be folded over and I'm gonna go ahead and use the fusible web again, but you could just use glue or whatever you want. You could even stitch this into place if you wanted. But before we do that, let's do that last blanket stitch right around the edge. So I've got three strands of that bright red color here ready to go. And I put a little knot at the end. This is a pretty small knot and I'm just gonna kind of tuck it in this little corner here where it's going to be covered up. So we'll start on the inside. Next, I'm just gonna start right on top of the, the stitch beside it. To get that blanket stitch started, I'm going to loop through that same hole twice. So now I've got that little loop and I'm just gonna go straight through this direction and pull it tight. And now I will shift over to our little flap. Now I've got it started. And the key to a nice blanket stitch is really making sure you're consistent with how far apart each of your stitches are and how deep in they are as well. Sometimes I'll make little measuring marks on my finger just so that I can hold it up and that's really useful. Another tip with the blanket stitch is make sure you go in the same side, in the same direction as you did from the very beginning. So every time I'm going to be going from the inside out and then the same way through the loop, the inside out. Pull it through, make your loop, go back through the loop, pull the loop tight. That's the easiest way for me to do a blanket stitch. I know there's several other ways to do it, including sticking it in the needle and taking your thread and making a little loop around your needle and then pulling that through. That's another way you can do this. There's lots of ways. As long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. All right, so for this last stitch, I'm going to tuck that into a stitch from the other side. So this will just go right in. You can see it's coming out where that thread already comes out. And then we're gonna wanna do a little loop-de-loop -loop around it. This is gonna be hidden by our little folds. So we don't have to worry about this being perfect. And then I'll just tie a little knot. And then we'll just cut that extra thread. 
All right, so I have my two pieces of fusible web right here on each flap. So I'll fold it over. I'm going to do just one side at a time so that I can get it in the right place. I don't need to put a cloth down since I'm not using the heat transfer vinyl, but I do need to make sure my iron is clean so I don't end up with any splotches on my white felt. Just going to hit it one more time on the top to give it that nice closed shape. And there we go. All right, let's add our stamp. So you can do this with the fusible web if you'd like, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the glue since it's a smaller area. So I'll just add a little bit of glue right around the edge. And this glue dries pretty hard, so you'll wanna make sure you don't get it out of the edges outside of the square. And then this time I chose the star shape in the color turquoise, just to change up our color palette a little bit. And I'll make sure I get all those little star tips so they don't flap when they're getting mailed. <laughs> And there we have it. Two options for some very cute felt envelopes. Thanks for coming along this journey with me. Be sure to check out our shop, feltpaperscissors.com to find all of these materials to make these yourself and subscribe to our channel to see our video next month. All right, now I'm gonna send these off to my friend. Ready to go.